TNTM The Show presents Comicast 268 with your host, Pablo Gunner, and I am here to talk nerdy to you about the comics for the week of January 11th, the comics that came out that day. Sorry uh, that it's late, or that the comics are late. Um, I'm just looking around for the books that I'm going to give away. I give away all the free digital comic codes um, in my Marvel comics that I pick up. Um, and since you had to wait a week, I thought I would give them away, two that I had left over from last week. So here's a code for Star Wars 26. It's 3, C for Charlie, 6, N for Nova, R for Rigoberto, 6, 2, J for Jones, H for Hawk, 2, A for Alvin, and V for Vegeta. I'll give the next one away at the end of the podcast. So, anyways, I don't even think I said this, which is, here at Talk Nerdy to Me, we do a comic book podcast every week where we review the comics of the week. Um, as I said, I'm Pablo Gunner, and I'm just a normal, average dude. Well, you know, anyways. Um... Except that I read a crap ton of comics every week and review them for your viewing pleasure or so you don't have to waste money or so you know what the best of the best is because that's what we try to do here is just review the best of the best so that you know what it is. If we don't re review it here, it means that it's either better in trade or that it just sucks so we don't pick it up. Um, so, or it's just, it doesn't make the cut because we try to get, we have our grade scale and it's strong buy, buy, weak buy. Strong skim, skim, weak skim, and then passes pass. So we try to keep get books that are just strong buys and buys. Um, as well as we have this thing. Um, it's our best book of the week, but we call it the B-Bow, back and bag of the week. You know, put it in that nice back and bag. So um, I think that is it. So this week, um, the order of the books is the way that I read them. Um, I do have a tone that plays when I am, you know, reviewing these books. So it's going to be a one minute timer and it tells me, and it's going to go off and it tells me when it's time to wrap things up. Here it is. If you know what it is, send me a message, hit me up, tell me what it is and I'll hook you up with a free digital comic. It's video game related. That's all the hint I'll give you. Without further ado, let's get into this, okay? Because there's a lot of books this week. Well, eh, actually, it's probably less than, than normal. I think about, like, 14. All right, starting with Red Sonja, the zero got me, so I thought I'd pick up the number one. Uh, it's published by Dynamite, written by Amy Chu, illustrated by Carlos Gomez, uh, colored by Mohan. Um, so, yeah, this actually... I kind of felt like the Zero would have been the better number one, just because, like, this starts and you don't know what's going on, and they're like, these police are like, yeah, there's some naked woman with a sword in New York, and um, it's Ren Sonia, and she looks amazing, she looks awesome, and uh, one guy shoots her and stuff, and she's all freaked out. Um, but she's fighting, and it's weird because one of the dudes kind of understands her language, and it's because... His grandma, you know, spoke a similar language. They take her to a mental hospital, and there's these guys that are wearing the symbol of her enemy. So she breaks loose, and it seems like there's something going on. So, uh, that is related. That, you know, some sort of magic is being used that teleported her and these people to this uh, alternate dimension, which is our dimension. Um, or our reality, whatever. So, uh, yeah, it, it got me interested. I'll, pr I'll pick up a second issue, as well as actually it got me really excited for, because there's a part that has an interview with uh, Benjamin Percy for James Bond, so it got me pretty excited for a new James Bond story arc. I'm going to have to check that out as well. Um, coming out in March. But anyways, um, this book was it looked amazing, and it was surprisingly interesting. I was not really like looking forward to her being in New York, but 
It turned out to be really good and really interesting. So, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and pick up the second issue. Um, I feel like it's not... Uh, I'll give it a strong buy, but it's not quite a contender for back and back of the week. Okay? Uh, next, I actually didn't want to pick up this book. It's the Totally Awesome Hulk, number 14, but I had already ordered it, so I didn't have a choice. Um, it's... Uh, like I said, Totally Awesome Hulk 14. It is written by Greg Pak. Artist is German. Or, yeah. Peralta, or German Peralta, I'm going to say. Color artist J. David Ramos and Dona Sanchez Almara. So this picks up kind of where it left off, which is, it is, um, the Hulk, the totally awesome Hulk, going after this dragon that's captured Jeremy Lin and this um, robot. And uh, so, and I think they actually found out, I don't know, it's just, I just, I don't know. It looks fine, it looks good, it does look good. I like the way it looks. I just, I really don't care anymore. It's like I said, it's, it's just a PSA at this point. Um, for like, it's just literally like almost every person in this book is Asian, and I have nothing against Asian. But why? It's like if it was if it was in Asia, I'd be like, okay, no surprise there. Um, but like, I don't know. It just is not what I want it to be, and that's fine. If the writer is doing what he wants to do, then that's fine. It's just not for me anymore. But essentially, it's just it, it's cheesy. It's just. It feels like a kid's story where they literally have to have Jeremy Lin. They play basketball with this device that's going to blow up this machine. Um, it's, it's I like I said, I feel, it feels like a kid's story. Um, and it's not for me. So, uh, I, I'm, I would say that because it looks good and it's just not for me, but I feel like it's probably for other people, I'm going to give this a uh, week by, and I'm going to be dropping it from here on out, if I didn't order more. Um, anyways, there's a digital code if you want to check it out for yourself and tell me what you think. A for Africa, Q for Quill, F for Frank, 8, 0, B for Bravo, K for Kill, S for Saiyan, K for Kill, A for Africa, and for Nova, and U for Ultron. Next, we have Justice League of America Vixen Rebirth, number one. And, uh, yeah, it starts off, and it's about this lady. They're just telling her story. She's having, she has an interview, and they're telling her story about, like, oh, she's a model, she came from this background, she's really, you know, fashionista and stuff, and she, you know, came from um, being, like, poor and stuff, and now she's, like, this fashion icon. She's this, uh model this runway model and stuff and then you get her backstory about her dad how he owned a church and stuff and how her mom was killed and stuff like that um and how like she's the one that like her that medallion she has it gives her powers of animals it's kind of like animal man um it, it pretty much is animal man but she uses a thing um it was all right uh it's written by steve orlando um, or co-writers are Steve Orlando and Jody Hauser, and then Jamal Campbell as art and color. It looks pretty good. It was really interesting to get her backstory. You've probably seen her in Arrow if you watch the show. Uh, she's been popping up more. Um, I wasn't in love with it, but it was not bad. It, it, you know, it was definitely good. Um, so I'm going to give it... Um, I'm going to give it a buy. I think it's, it's worth a buy. Continuing on to Inhumans vs. X-Men number two. It is Charles Soule and Jeff Lemire are the writers. Pencilers Lionel Francis Yu, inker Gary Alanguilan, colorist David Curiel. So this one, the fight starts, and it starts right away. Like... We have the X-Men, and they are straight up attacking the Inhumans. No holding back. 
Uh, Medusa's getting ready for war. She's in her, like, war gear. It looks pretty awesome. Um, and every team is making their attack and stuff. Uh, it, it's really freaking cool. It's crazy, though, because even Beast is, like, part of this. Like, Young Beast. And I wouldn't imagine Young Beast part of being part of this. I don't know. Um, but... You know, I guess when when the end of your race is coming to an end, I guess. I don't know. Um, and then uh, the Johnny Storm gets involved, too. You know, it's it's pretty crazy how, uh, like, a lot of the X-Men are getting involved in this. Um, you know, all-new Wolverine. Uh, you know, there's just so many here. Um, and then they're about to break somebody loose. And then it ends with... Uh, different Wolverine um, it's a lot it's it's action-packed um, it's uh, you know it's 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 a little chaotic because it is so fast-paced but it looks amazing it's really interesting this is fantastic I really like it this is I feel like what it should be um, which is exactly it it's in humans versus X-Men immediately um, and that's what I want to see. That's what I expect when I read a book that's called Inhumans vs. X-Men. Um, so it delivers on that. And so I will go ahead and give it a strong buy. Um, not totally in love with it, so I, I'm not going to give it a contender for Back and Bag of the Week. Um, but here's a digital code if you want to check it out for yourself and tell me what you think. Uh, 7, X for X-Men, K for uh, Kill. 6, B for Bravo, 5, 8, G for George, J for Jones, A for Alex, 8, and Q for Quill. Next, it's Bad Girl and the Birds of Prey, number 6. Um, and it had the great uh, cliffhanger at the end where Huntress finds out that her mom is actually this mob boss leader. Um, and there was the one that she was going after. And then she gets, the, you get the full story of like why and how and everything like that. And it's actually pretty crazy and pretty messed up that it was all just a trick to trick, um, I guess, you know, she'd fall in love with one of the side guys her mom did. And so she made a plan to like fake her and her husband's death, um, so that they could disappear um, and go be together, and it went bad. It ended up being not fake. They ended up really killing him, and it, and she thought that her mom was really dead, even though that was fake. So that was really messed up. Um, it's just really good, and as well as Oracle, but I'm wondering if this Oracle, there he, they haven't really vetted him out completely. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more. I'm, I'm into this book. Uh, it looks really good. Um, Julie Benson and Sh Julie and Shauna Benson are the writers. Roj Antonio is the artist, and Alan, Alan Pasalacqua on colors. Uh, they all do a phenomenal job. I really enjoyed this issue. This was a great conclusion. The way the whole thing was told, um, and and I love how Hunt Huntress the decision that she makes at the end because they put it in her hands and go it you know what this is your thing uh you make the choice strong buy um i'm gonna say that this one is a contender next it is occupy avengers number three David F. Walker is the writer. Carlos Pacheco is the penciler. Rafael Ponteris is the inker. Sonia Obak with Will Quintana as colorists. And it starts, and Hawkeye is getting his butt beat by uh, Nighthawk. Um, but it doesn't even look like Nightwing, because he's wearing like this weird shirt with a mask on it, and then he's wearing like a black beanie and a brown jacket, so it doesn't look like him. So it's a little confusing at first. I really don't like the way that Nighthawk <laughs> looks. Um, but I really enjoy... Um, gosh, what is his name? Uh, this native guy that is now rolling with... Um, that is rolling with Hawkeye, you know, to 
right the wrongs, you know, and it's not like crazy stuff, it's not like, but it does usually involve some heroics, and it's cool because Night Mask, she actually has, he has a sidekick too, so, well not sidekick, but there's this chick that's there too, and they're just on the sidelines, but uh, yeah, so like they have this new task and this new mission, um, uh, where they're going to this place to find out about this LMD. It's interesting. I like it. It looks really great. Um, I don't think it's the greatest book quite yet. Uh, I think next issue will probably be better. Um, so, I feel like it's still really solid though. There are some good parts. I really like the back and forth between uh, the two side characters. I don't know how to put it necessarily. Um, but, uh, yeah. So... Um, I'm gonna give this one a, you know what, I'm gonna go with a buy. I'm gonna go with a buy on this one, okay? Um, oh, here's a digital code, check it out. F for Familia, C for Carlos, M for Marcos, J for Juan, Q for Quintana, Y for Yucca, another Y for Yucca, T for Tomas, 3, 1, B for Bravo, K for Kill, I, I don't know. Next, it is Superman Action Comics 971. And so, this is funny, because it picks up with uh, Jonathan and Lois, and they're having a talk, and he's like, he messed up the house and did all, he made a mess, but it's like funny, because it's like, well, you left him alone, um, both of you. Both of his parents left him alone, like, what do you expect a kid to do? Um, and then it gets back to what's been going on with Lex Luthor and Superman on this planet, uh, which, um, yeah, so it's pretty great because it's like, it seems like Superman is siding with these, uh, people and they're like, yeah, you're guilty. And then he's like, he does a switcheroo on them and they make their escape. Uh, it's really well done. I really like it because they do a good job of, uh, tricking you, but then they end up on this planet that is, uh, in a solar system that has a red sun, so now Lex Luthor has to be the Superman in the situation because, uh, Clark is becoming powerless. It's really interesting and really great. And then Jonathan is helping his mom to figure out this case of the missing building, um, with Geneticron or whatever. Uh, it is written by Dan Jurgens, uh, pencils by Stefan Segovia, and then inker is Art Thibbert, color is Arif Prianto. Uh, I really like this one. This was really good. Um, I really enjoyed it and appreciated it. It was fantastic, um, and it's it's getting pretty crazy even with the Lois Lane stuff. Um, like uh, yeah, so I, I'm I'm really interested in looking forward to to reading more. I will give this one a strong buy and a contender. And you know what that means, folks. It's time for a commercial break. Because that's a halfway point. That's what we do here is we talk about one of our sponsors, uh, like you heard at the beginning. And I want to talk about Gamers Anonymous because I feel like I don't talk about Gamers Anonymous enough. Gamers Anonymous is so phenomenal. They, they have, uh, you know, like... It's a retro gaming store, but it's much more than that because they do so much for the community. Like, I'm recording this on a Friday night, and they have a movie night, and they're showing Akira, which I love. Uh, maybe I'll swing by because I really love that movie, even though I have a lot of editing to do with all the videos that we have sitting on the back burner or from, you know, still some stuff left over from Santa Fe Comic Con as well as some stuff from... Um, from uh, Tony Tone Bone, uh, you know, from his Japanese trip, and then uh, you know, of course, Albuquerque Comic Con. But anyways, um, yeah, they, they're so great because they, like I said, they don't just have retro gaming. Which, hey, you're into retro gaming, they got all your retro gaming needs. You know, like that's the thing is, I like to, I'm like, I'm, I try to be, I'm trying to be a purist, and I want to play the old school systems on like an old school TV that's not HD. Um, so, um, I, I, there is, the only system that's available is a Retron 3, 
And the Retron 3, it doesn't play a lot of the Sega or Super Super Nintendo games, so they don't carry it anymore. Once they found out about that, they stopped carrying that, which they do have the Retron, I think they do have the Retron 5. Um, and so, which, you know, but that's HD, and I want to, like I said, purist. So I got all my old school systems from them. Well, not all of them, but I got Nintendo, I got Super Nintendo, and uh, Sega, which is my favorite. And actually, it was a Sega, it's the Mini, so I never had that one, and it's really neat. Um, but all the, it's, and I got so many games from them, build up my collection. Actually, the wife is the one that's, that got all those systems from me, for me. Um, I think it was my birthday. But anyways... Yeah, and, and, you know, the thing is, too, like, they hooked me up with a 10% discount just because I was buying, like, three systems and a few games all at once. Like, just because. Uh, they're great like that. Uh, you know, I, that's why I love doing biz with, with them. As well as if I have any trade-ins, I feel like I'm ripping them off because I get a lot of money from them. Like, I traded in Last of Us once. Um, I know that was a horrible decision because it is easily one of the greatest games I've ever made, but it was so depressed with that game after I... Had it that I was like, I don't want to play it again. It makes me too depressed, uh, you know. And then, of course, they had DLC come out. And I was like, damn it, I need that game back. But I think I made, like, almost, I, I almost got my money back um, for it. I think I got, like, 50 or 55 bucks from it. You're not going to get that from any place else when you trade in uh, a new game. So, you know, like, that, it, it's top-notch. And, like I said, they, ha they, they have a lot of new stuff, too. Like, they have... If you, you can order brand new games from them if you want to, and they have brand new, they have Xbox One games, they have PS4 games, you know, I'm sure they're going to have the Switch and stuff like that, um, you know, which I'm totally jacked off for. I would, uh, I would love to chat about the Switch with, uh, you know, the owner, John Sakura. Like I said, they do plenty of other stuff, though, too. They, they you know, they do, they have Pokemon, they have, uh, it's just ridiculous how many things. So make sure you follow them on Facebook. Join their community group on Facebook. Check out their website. Uh, it's garetro.com. And look them up. I mean, they are located here in New Mexico, and they have two shops. There's the East Side and the West Side store. Um, I want to say the East Side is Wyoming and Pennsylvania. That's probably not right. Um, but anyways, uh, but yeah, it, it's next to the Domino's. Wonderful place. And then the West Side store is off of Alameda and Corrales Road. Um, just wonderful, wonderful place. Great employees, really helpful, really nice. You know, they give you hookup just because, and if you join part of their their rewards program, they'll send you like a 10, 15, 20% discount every once in a while, at least once a month usually. So uh, definitely, you know, make sure you check them out. Back to some comics, folks, with The Flash, number 14. Uh, and so this is like retelling like the rogues and stuff like it's flash and he's like, yeah, the rogues, you know, about the past, like, you know, what's happened recently with them helping against Garad and helping with, you know, the, when they had the whole villains thing going on and then he's looking for him, you know, just to see what's going on with them. Uh, and so he's researching, finding out the, about their victims and stuff, and trying to find out one of their hideouts. And it turns out they're actually baiting him, because um, they set him up to look for a heist in another country. And he's there to... Um, and they're, you know, like I said, they're back. They're back in town. Captain Cold and the Rogues are back in town. So it is... Uh, I'm totally jacked off for it. I've been missing them. But they are back to basics. I... I mean, some of them, they still have... Captain Cold, he doesn't have powers anymore. He just has the cold gun. He's back to that. But I think the rest of the crew, they have legit powers. I think. Um, so, yeah. It's written by Joshua Williamson. Uh, Carmen Di Gian Domenico is back as the artist. Ivan Placencia is color artist. It looks phenomenal. It's really interesting. It's really good. I thought it was... Uh, slow, and I was like, oh man, this is going to take forever. This is going to be like a multiple issue thing that's going to build up to it, but it doesn't. And I love that they did that all in one issue, which has is brought back the rogues in the way that they went about it. So I give this one a strong buy and a contender. Uh, now it's Power Man and Iron Fist number 12 with David F. Walker as a writer, Sanford Green as the artist, Lee Lowridge as color artist. 
And man, this is crazy. There's just this huge gang war going down in Harlem um, between Alex Wilder's crew, Black Cat's crew, Tombstone's crew. And Tombstone is, he's like talking to Power Man and Iron Fist. And they're like, hey, if you don't do something about this, something's going to go really bad. But it turned out that it was just like a setup. Um, you know, Tombstone's like pulling back to one location. And so everyone's making an attack on, on Tombstone. Um, and it turns out that Tombstone's actually just setting everybody up to take all of his enemies out at once. Um, which uh, he tells does take a lot of people out. There are some casualties, but it doesn't... Um, I don't know. It's one of those things where it's like, you don't really care though. Because it's like, one of the dudes is a bad guy, and it's not a bad guy that you even care about. Um, but there are casualties, and these guys, like, they're like, oh, he set us up. And you see some other people are joining up with Luke Cage and Iron Fist, uh, which is Senor Magico and uh, some and a couple other guys. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that, this team up. It's going to be cool. Um, so, yeah, it looks amazing. It's really interesting. I, I enjoyed this one a lot. It was top notch. I didn't see that coming and it was really good it was really well done it was fantastic so um i give it a strong buy and i give it a contender here's a digital code if you want to check it out uh f for familia c for carlos and for marcos zero five z for zorro one c for carlos k for kill four x for x men and then z for zorro Let's keep it going with some All-Star Batman number 6. This is $4.99. Um, so this is, it's, I have to say, like you don't even, uh, it's Jacques is the artist. Scott Schneider is the writer. And there's no dialogue. There's, well, there is not really dialogue. It kind of seems like prose. Um, where it's just like telling stories about Cat, not Captain Cold, uh, Mr. Freeze, as well as Batman, you know, and stuff. And it's really interesting how it relates, but it's all this stuff that's going to, Matt Hollingsworth his colors. But yeah, I love Jock. I think Jock is the perfect artist for Batman, um, which is weird because this actually is a very bright comic because it's white, because it is, uh, Mr. Freeze and it, it's, I think it takes place in like, I don't know, wherever it's cold. It's like in the North Pole or something. I don't know. But he finds this thing that's going to... It's like a cold virus that's going to turn everybody, you know, in, into the, his army. But Batman has, like... He has his backup plans. He's in this crazy suit. But he's also injected himself with this virus serum thing. It's super interesting and really, really awesome and really cool. Um, I, like... Like I said, it, I think it's brilliant. It's different. I don't think this is going to be for everybody, but it's absolutely for me because uh, I love Jacques and I love Schneider and I love the way they do this. It doesn't seem like it's over because there is still the next thing. Um, but there is a little tidbit at the end too that it's the Cursed Wheel Part 5 um, with uh, Francesco Francavia as the art, uh, which is really interesting because it relates to the Riddler. Um, overall, it's all really interesting. The ending was a little confusing. Um, but I think it's meant to me because it's a Riddler. But yeah, I love it. I love it. Like I said, combination of Jacques and, and Schneider is a killer combo for me. And then the second part was nice too. It was short, but it was interesting. So this one's a strong buy and a contender. On to a controversial, controversial cover. Uh, it's Spider-Man number 12 with Brian Michael Bendis as a writer. Sarah Pacelli back as artist. Inking assist is Gaetano Carlucci. Justin Ponsor as color artist. And so, yeah, it starts with the kissing of Miles and Gwen, of Spider-Gwen. Um, and he's telling the story. It's like he's telling the story to his roommate's Fabio Moon Gold Balls, I think it's Moon, I don't know, um, and then, uh, and Genki, 
and then tells a story like he's like oh he and he ended with that but he's like oh but let me get to the beginning so he kind of tarantino's it you know it's oh i gotta tell you and so it's about like him finding out about his dad he's looking for his dad and then maria hill's like oh yeah by the way he might be from all in a different dimension because we can't find him because we're the best at finding people so he ends up going to spider gwen's dimension and in doing so he goes up he gets caught up in her universe's bs uh, you know with this lady called ringer um and then spider gwen shows up so that's it um it's interesting I'm looking forward to Spider-Gwen even more so because of this. And I thought this was really great. It looks wonderful. It looks amazing, fantastic, gorgeous. Um, it's just absolutely, you know, I just love it. I love Miles. Um, he's quickly getting to the top of my favorite uh, Spider-Man list. Um, I don't know, though, because spider Gwen is probably my favorite. She's not a Spider-Man, but, you know. Anyways, uh, yeah, so this one's a strong buying contender. And here's a digital code. F for Fan, Z for Zarbon, M for Mankey, K for Kill, A for Alvin, L for Logan, T for Tomas, B for Bravo, F for Frank, Z for Zarbon, H for Hotel, M for Mankey. <sighs> Next, it's Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps, number 12. It's written by Robert Venditti, artist Ethan Van Shiva, and then colorist is Jason Wright. And it is Lar Flees, and he is attacking the Corps. Um, the Green Lantern Corps and the Yellow Lantern Corps, or the Sinestro Corps, rather, and they end up, you know, joining forces, which they have been this entire time. And then Hal Jordan shows up with two of the Guardians and uh, Kyle Rayner, and they join the fray as well. And I just love it because they are just driving, um, they're just driving Larkley's crazy. Um, but yeah, I just love how Jon Stewart is really leading the way on this, being a great leader. He's like, hey, this is the plan. And then they're like, all right, we need another plan. So they come up with another plan. And the ending was really warm hearted. And oh the the oh the ending is just freaking nuts. It's just crazy. Uh, it just blows my mind. Um, I'm look. I'm so jacked off for the future of uh, this title, I guess rather, because uh, I don't want to give it up. But it's so interesting the way that it concludes and the way that everything happens. It's a strong buy and easily a contender. Continues to be one of the best books that DC is putting out. And one of the best books. Period. <laughs> Moving on, it's Silk number 16, a clone conspiracy tie-in um, with Robbie Thompson as the writer, Irene Strachowski as the artist, uh, Ian Herring and Irma Navilla as colorist. So I'm really not, like, I'm just not invested in this story arc just because I don't care about the clone conspiracy stuff. Um, and I don't know, there's something about this Jameson, he just looks weird. And he doesn't look like Jameson to me that much, kind of, but not really um but i uh, this one really sucked me into it because it you know it shows the boyfriend and now he has a real body but it also shows that one of the clones she's like i don't know why i'm back i don't know how i'm back but there's something fishy and like you said there's always a catch so i'm trying to find out what's going on and there's like this kind of like an alternate dimension thing going on or like pocket reality or something where all these people are uh, it's really interesting. Um, it ends really well. I really enjoyed it. I, I'm really liking digging this art style. It really is fitting. It goes well with the other art artists too. Just the tone and, you know, the feel and everything of it. Um, Silk is amazing. She's such an interesting character and I really like how different she is. Um, so yeah, I, I give this one a strong buying contender as well. And here's a digital code so you can check it out. F for Familia, C for Carlos, M for Marcos, 5, F for Familia, C for Carlos, L for Lupita, P for Pablito, C for Carlos, B for Bonilla, H for Hector, and 7. I just can't, I don't know. 
Next, it is Batman Detective Comics 948. And this one, I don't know, this one kind of felt like a rehash of stuff that's already been told, which is some origin stuff of Batwoman. Um, it is uh, James Tignon and Marguerite Benet as the writers. Ben Oliver is the artist. Yeah, the, the art is killer. It's just mind-blowingly great, and it's perfect. I love the way... I just love this artist. So it is, like I said, it's um, Kate when she was still with her dad, like before when she was, like, I, she was just following him, trying to find out about him. And then uh, they end up doing some research into, like, this monster corpse, and these there's these seagulls that are transforming into people. And then there's this lady that's kind of... I think she has, like, a bad past. Um, and she's just, like, working with... Um, oh gosh, I can't remember the name of it, but not Star Labs, uh, gosh, what is it? But anyways, they give him this mission, they're like, hey, these people are involved, and so yeah, it's the, the old crew of, um, of her dad, of Kate Kane's dad, and so, um, this dude is sent to go after them and stuff and retrieve this thing so that they can create more monsters. It's pretty terrifying, it's really interesting. I love it. It looks gorgeous. It truly, truly is just like the best looking art uh, this week and maybe for the whole month. I'm not sure because it is just stunning and the color is just mind blowing. All of it, all the visual is just mind blowingly great. So obviously this one is a strong buying contender. I love how there's fallout too from the monster stuff. Last book, Miss Marvel number 14. It is G. Willow Wilson as a writer, Takeshi Miyazawa as artist, Ian Herring as color artist. And so this one's pretty interesting because it actually starts off like a World of Warcraft uh, gameplay going on with her and her friends around the world. Or, yeah, I'm gonna, I don't know if it's around the world or around the country. Um, and one of the guys says something creepy to her, like, oh yeah, something about like where you live. He says like her specific address. And so he's like, all right, this is creepy. So she finds out where this guy lives. She visits him, and he's like, what are you talking about? I wasn't even playing. Someone hijacked my uh, stuff. Like, someone hacked me and was using it. So she's trying to find out who it actually was. Um, and so she gets to the bottom of it a little bit there towards the end. But, like, it's really creepy because someone's just following her. And it's the character... Um, in that game that said something creepy to her. Uh, I'm really interested to find out because this is kind of like, reminds me of like cyber stalking or just like um, cyber bullying too. And uh, I think it's relative. So really interesting. It's different from anything that's been going on, but that's what I love about this book is that it's not the norm and it looks perfect. Everything about it is just wonderful. Great to have Takeshi Miyazawa back. Um, it's just, I love this book. So it's a strong buy and a contender. Here's the digital code. F for Familia, C for Carlos, M for Marcos, W for Wesker, 7, 0, 7, N for Nova, R for Richter, F for Familia, Z, or U for Ultron, and P for Pietro. All right, well, that's it for the books for the week, but it is time to announce my back and bag of the week and runner-up. Um, so, yeah, uh, Miss Marvel's so great. Um, Batman, just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous book. It's ridiculous how gorgeous it is. Um, it is just pure greatness. Um, so, yeah, you know what? I am going to have to go with... Um, Batman Detective Comics as my runner-up. It is just absolutely stunning and gorgeous, and it's really interesting. Like I said, I love the fact that there's fallout from the Monster Men, I want to say, uh, story arc. And then, it, uh, it just it's, it's the visuals that get me. But for me, a lot of times, it's not about visuals. And not that it matters, because the visuals in Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps are effing amazing um they they're really consistent with this book with this title and the way that it's looked but the best part is just the ending 
um, because there is Tomar 2, I want to say, and his mom's like, I don't still don't agree with you, and he's like, but I'm doing all this good and stuff, and she's like, yeah, but your dad died. And then Hal Jordan's like, oh, by the way, your dad's really proud of you. I met him in the Emerald Space, you know, where all the dead lanterns go. Um, and he's like, oh, thanks so much. And he's like, you know, but you should try to, you know, get things right with your mom because I never got the chance to do it with mine because she didn't like my choices either. Um, and just how he relates. Wonderful. Um, but lastly, the fact that they're going to make one core out of both the um, Sinestro core and the Green Lantern core. They decide they're going to be one core. Green Lanterns, Yellow Lanterns, one core. That excites me to no end. I'm like, wow, this is brilliant. Um, and it's a whole new direction. So yeah, that's why Hal Jordan and Green Lantern core number 12 is my back and back of the week. And Batman Detective Comics 948 is my runner up. Tell me what yours is. Please talk nerdy to me. Tell me what's going on with you. Uh, sorry I haven't been able to put up that much stuff. been super busy with work, uh, being really focused um, on this thing that I have going on. So, uh, But yeah, I will try to get to all of the content uh, as soon as possible and start putting that stuff out. I really appreciate you all sticking around with us. Um, I, you know, It was great meeting a lot of you at the um, Albuquerque Comic Con freaking wonderful. Uh, that was my favorite part. But anyways, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for following us, you know, um, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, you know, the Facebook community group, the Facebook page, as well as our website, you know, and, and wherever else you can find us. So remember that stuff is all at TNT and the show. That's all of it. You can also send us emails if you want to. Uh, you know, any questions you want to send us, anything you want us to try, you want us to do something different, any suggestions, any queries, you know, go ahead and please send them. Um, that is for me. For that's that's it for me now. Tomorrow we will be doing the next Comic Cast, Comic Cast two sixty nine. Yeah, and that's it. Like I said, uh, make sure you talk nerdy to me and keep your eyes on the phone. Comments!